regular meeting, 6 p.m. in the cafeteria. May I roll call, please? Mrs. Avery? Dr. Bashara Roth? Here. Dr. Bilbo? Here. Mrs. Chester? Here. Mrs. Holgettis? Here. Mr. Gentile? Here. Dr. Permenter? Vice President Dace? Here. President Carter? Here. Can we all raise for their flag salute led by Mr. Rich Dace? This particular presentation, the Student Safety Data System, is a presentation that happens twice yearly and is required uh, under the anti-bullying uh, legislation here in New Jersey. So it happens twice a year because the school year is divided into two reporting periods. As you can see today, I am uh, providing information about reporting period one, which is September to December of 2021. As noted, if you can read it down here, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Burgess, our Director of Student Services for General Head, who's also our District Anti-Bullying Coordinator for preparing the presentation. So, as I mentioned, uh, there are uh, reporting requirements, uh, and this actually falls on the public school safety law, and it relates to a number of different things, violence, vandalism, as well as HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. And as you can see, some things are data in terms of numbers, uh, some things are other types of information, for example, who's involved in terms of the investigation, uh, training, uh, a lot of it is related to HIV, but it does cover other categories, as you can see, one of them being uh, alcohol and drugs. So this slide shows, remember from September through December, 
the number of instances that fell under the category of violence, which is 11, and the number that fell under the category of vandalism, which is 2. And obviously, and I'll try not to repeat this, but 1 is 1 too many, but we also have to take into consideration that we have over 3,000 students at six different schools. Next, you could see substance abuse. From September uh, through December, we did not have any. And then weapons, we had one. Then you can see this also covers any type of incident, no matter what it is, that leads to removal for at least half a day. So for example, a student is suspended, but it doesn't have anything to do with violence, with vandalism, with HIV. Um, this could happen to a student who is a multiple time repeat offender of the same offense. It could also be something, for example, um, gross disrespect and insubordination to a staff member or another type of safety issue that doesn't fall under one of those categories. I will say it again, 51, it kind of steps you back because it seems like a high number, but we have over 3,000 students. This slide gives us the definition of HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. I am not going to sit here and read it to you. You all can read. Um, this is something that we review administratively with all our staff, certificated and support staff, and also review with the students as well. Obviously making the language in an understandable manner based on the age and developmental level of the children. Every district uh, at each school needs to have an anti-bullying specialist, ABS, and you can see the staff members, um, they're all counselors at our schools. We also involve our um, assistant principals, or in the case of Pomona, the principal, uh, in HIV investigations. Uh, I'm pleased to say that that is uh, basically non-existent at preschool, but we are required to include them in every part of this and report and train. Now when we look at hit by category, and basically we have a lead, which means it was investigated and uh, not confirmed as hit. So something took place, an investigation was done, it went through all steps of the process and not found to be hit. And you can see we had 13 of those from September through December. I do want to mention that just because it wasn't HIV does not mean it wasn't a concern. It could have been addressed through a different student code of conduct uh, aspect. It could have been addressed up through personnel if it involved a staff member. On the confirmed side, which means it went through every step of the process, and was confirmed as a HIV from September to December, we had 14 of those incidents. We then collect data on what was the basis of the HIV, and you can see the different categories. Um, and we have some categories that were not included uh, of the basis. We have other HIVs, um, that they are, and then there's this, I'll call it the generic one, other distinguishing characteristics. So it's not one of those protected classes as defined by the general law that we think of with protected classes, but rather it's something else distinguishing about that person. It, it could be that I'm wearing striped shoes and you know the type of shoes I wear. It could be the color of hair something unique about the individual that was the reason the HIV occurred. So, as I think everyone in this room knows, well maybe not everyone, but when we look at student misbehavior, we like to look at it from both sides. And what I mean by that is we do have a code of conduct, 
and disciplinary consequences are assigned. And they are a wide range of things um, listed on the screen. But we also believe that when a child is acting out in an inappropriate manner, there is generally some root cause, some reason behind it. And so we believe in educating the child and providing interventions and supports so that it does not become a repeat behavior or that we can lessen uh, that behavior. And so there's a whole bevy of uh, things on that list as well. We are also required to list the number of, you can see, trainings um, throughout the district. Remember, this is all the schools, and you see 58, and then programs, which could be different kinds of activities. The training tends to lead more toward the staff and the programs, more toward the students. And these are done at different levels. Sometimes it's all school, sometimes it's by classroom, sometimes it's by team. Uh, from the training side, there's training for the entire staff, uh, for the administrators, for the student safety data team, uh, the student safety climate committees, as well as certainly for the anti-bullying specialists. And that is the end of the presentation. Uh, I will be happy to uh, take any questions or comments from the board. Does anybody have any questions or comments? And then uh, items three, four, and five are all related uh, to students from universities coming into the district to work with our staff for their clinical experiences or field, uh, field work. Thank you. Can I move to approve items one through five under the instruction, please? So moved. Second. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blush? Yes. Ms. Savory? Dr. Villalobo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Colgettis? Yes. Dr. Carmenter? Vice President Dace? Yes. President Carmen? Yes. Finances cooperations, please. Is, was there a finance committee today? Yes, yeah, so the finance committee met tonight prior um, to tonight's meeting. We reviewed the 
details list of financial reports, and we also briefly discuss substitute rates. Is there any questions for Doug or Sheila? Seeing none, we're moving on. Thank you. Items one through eight are the typical monthly uh, reports and resolutions. Item nine and ten are annual resolutions related to the school business administrator uh, being able to pay bills and do transfers, transitioning from the 21, 22, 22, 23 school year. Items 11 to 13 are related to our uh, reserve accounts. And this is the initial resolution that allows for an amount up to $2 million in each category. The final amount will come at the future after the audit is done and is part of the closeout of the current fiscal year. Item 14 is also an annual approval related to anticipated contracts. Items 15 and 16 are items related to finishing the year, a grant for one of the schools and a McKinney Vento students. Items 17 and 18 our submission of our annual federal grants, IDEA and ESEA. Items 19 and 20 are annual renewals with different uh, vendors with whom the district works. Items 21 through 29 are also all annual renewals. Uh, some of these items you will see no other proposals were received. Uh, that is when it was an RFP, a request for professional services. Some say no other bids were received, and that's when uh, the closed bid process was conducted. Annual renewals continue with items 31 through 39. Items 40 through 45 also continue with annual renewals. Uh, I believe this part of the agenda is a great representation of all the costs the district has to undergo in order to operate. Item 46 is a new resolution for our district, and I am not going to read it word for word, but basically uh, is looking at surplus funds held in trust by the Atlantic and Cape May County uh, JIF, the Joint Insurance Fund. And so without reading all the detail, uh, Galloway's share um, of this fund release is $19,130. And the resolution uh, takes this share and places it toward our premium uh, for the 2022-2023 school year. That is the actual part of that for the board. Items uh, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, and 52 all relate to uh, programs or services for students with disabilities. And items 53 and 54 relate to home instruction. Thank you. Can I motion to write these 1 through 54 under finances collaborations? So Second. Is there any board comment? May I have roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashara Bell? Yes. Ms. Savory? Dr. Billow? Yes. Ms. Chester? Yes, for the state of program 54. Mrs. Holganis? Dr. Carmenter, Vice President Dace. Yes. President Carmenter. Yes, facilities and maintenance, please. Thank you. I will give an update. Uh, the Arthur Rand Relocatable Classroom Project is underway. The footings, the plumbing, uh, and trenches for the sewer and water hookup is completed. The ramp, deck, steps, and canopy are being delivered, and the actual uh, units themselves are scheduled for delivery on July 12th. Uh, the Reeds Road parking lot uh, replacement, along with the Roman Access Road, the initial job meeting was held. Coordination is happening with the school administrators, uh, in including for uh, summer programs like ESY. And the actual work is anticipated to begin the second week of July. In addition to that, rooftop units are being replaced. We are awaiting the dates. Uh, due to the units being available for the Reach Road, Smithville, and Rolling Cafeteria, as well as the project to air condition the Arthur Rand Gym. Beyond that, uh, the Operations Department uh, Maintenance and Studio have shifted into summer work with cleaning and numerous annual summer maintenance projects. Thank you. Can you use this 
municipal facilities. Thank you. We have three items for Galloway Township Police, uh, Day, and Smithville Four Seasons. Can I motion to approve items one through three for the community municipal facilities? So moved. Second. Thank you. Is there any board comment? Ma'am, roll call, please. Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Vicerbo? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Goldadis? Yes. Dr. Carpenter? Vice President Dace? Yes. President Carmen? Yes. Moving on to question. Mr. Suzette, I have one question for now on facilities. Are we guaranteed that the bar for man are not the outcome when finished by the beginning of school year? Are we guaranteed that? Yes, Rich. Um, the anticipation is will be done uh, before the beginning of the school year to allow ample time to bring all the desks and all the other classroom needs in. So when you see that all of that, uh, I'll call it infrastructure work, is already completed, that's a great sign. And we just got the date. I don't know whether Rocco got it Friday or Monday, uh, Mr. Rosetti, but he sent an update uh, to me today. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The first item is a resolution to reappoint Julie and Nixon as the school business administrator. Uh, the date, salary, and other details are listed, including the note that, as required, Mrs. Uh, Nixon's contract was approved by the interim executive county superintendent. Thank you. Can I motion to item one under personnel, please? So. Second. Is there any board comment? May I roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Cherbla? Yes. Mrs. Savory? Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Colgatis? Yes. Dr. Carpenter? Vice President Dace? Uh, I guess I'll say yes. <laughs> President Carpenter? Absolutely yes. Thank you. I will convey that to Mrs. Nixon. I know she's very appreciative. Item two is a resolution to approve Anthony Lupo as an assistant principal at Bowen Rogers Elementary School for the 2022 2023 school year, and all the details are listed. Thank you. Can I motion to provide item two under personnel? So Second. Is there any board comment? May I have roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashirabla? Yes. Ms. Savory? Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Polgatis? Yes. Dr. Carpenter? Vice President Dace? Yes. President Carpenter? Yes. I, I will pause at this time and uh, let all our positions, but certainly for an administrative position, there were several rounds to the interview. We had a uh, nice pool of applicants, and after going through the initial round, a second round that involved performance tasks, as well as an interview with myself, uh, Dr. Moore, and Mr. Ruffy, that I think was about an hour and a half. Uh, Mr. Lupo still wanted the job, and we were very happy to offer it to him. Uh, Mr. Lupo comes to us from Gloucester County Institute of Technology, where he was a teacher of English. He also happens to be a resident of Galloway Township, and so it's my pleasure uh, to introduce Mr. Anthony Lupo. Congratulations. Thank you for being here and with your family as well. Uh, everyone knows that this personnel section is quite huge, so I will be chunking items the way I did under finance. Items 3 through 6 are all resignations. Items 7 through 12 are leave requests. Item uh, 13 is an item related to the 21-22 school year. Item 14 is the return of a staff member who was temporarily part-time back to full-time employment. Items 15 through 20 are the approval of new professional staff, uh, teachers, OTs, other categories. And when I'm done this section, uh, those that are here will be introduced. Items 21 through 27 are also approvals for new certificated staff. Uh, new to our district or in different positions than they were previously in. Items 28 through 32 are also the approval of new certificated staff. Items 33 and 34 are approvals of certificated staff in lead positions. 
Items 35 through 41 are approval of classroom assistant uh, full-time positions in various categories. Items 42 through 46 are also the approvals for classroom assistants in various positions. Items 47, 48 are for uh, secretaries new to the district and replacement positions. And item 49 is the approval of uh, a current uh, position that's being extended from part-time uh, to full-time. Item 50 is the approval of a part-time custodian. Item 51, we are advised today, uh, the person is not taking the job. Uh, she obtained full-time employment elsewhere, so we need to remove that. Item 52 is related to food service. Items 53 to 55 and 56 uh, are all the approval of subs in different categories. And item 57 is the approval of rates for uh, support staff categories of substitutes. Thank you. So can I have a motion to approve items 3 through 50? Was it 50? 50. 50, and then 52 through 57, please. So moved. Is there any word comment? May I roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Villalou? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Dr. Michelle Love? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Carmenter? Vice President Dace? Yes. President Carmen? Yes. And we will pause for introductions? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call on each administrator and ask you to introduce uh, those staff members with whom you were involved in their hiring. Uh, and then we're going to look and see if we missed anybody, because just in case there's not an administrator here, I don't want to make, I want to make sure we don't leave anyone out. So I will begin with Mr. Laycap, the principal of Regis Road Elementary School. Good evening. I'd like to introduce Mr. Bologna to the board. Uh, it's Joe Bologna. Joe is a former student, current resident, and uh, he spent the past three years working in our media program. Uh, in the interview process, one of the things I kind of found out, I didn't realize before, how how much understanding Joe has of math and math teaching. Um, but more importantly, the past three years of working with him, one thing I love about Joe is how well he gets along with students, the way he interacts with students. Uh, especially in our BD program, sometimes they can be reluctant learners, uh, but Joe always approaches them from a position of support and a positive approach. Uh, he's always willing to go the extra mile. If you uh, look on our Facebook page, you can see him with a uh, purple wig on, playing Baby Shark with our MD room. Uh, so he's a uh, Rock star for our, our little guys and we'll be a rock star in our sixth grade also. Next, I will go to Dr. Bowman, our Director of Student Services for Special Education. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to use my notes just because we have so many coming to us in the Special Ed Department. I am, while I'm sad that Joe is leaving us as a classroom assistant in our behavior program, I'm so excited that what you'll hear tonight is a number of our.
Thank you, Dr. Bowman. I also see Mrs. Napoli. Mrs. Napoli, our director of curriculum. Do you have someone to introduce? Have we covered everyone? Wonderful. Well, welcome to all of you. We're really happy to have you join the Galloway School family, either in a new position or a brand new the district. Absolutely. Thank you. Supplemental personnel, please. Thank you. Uh, the first item, 58, is an item uh, finishing the 21-22 school year. Items 59 through 62 are related to our summer community education and let us be pleased programs. Items 63 and 64 are for middle school supplemental uh, positions, different clubs, activities, different things that happen at GTMS. Item 65, we're pleased. Uh, student council has existed at the elementary schools for many, many years, but we are making it more formal uh, by officially having advisors that will receive uh, stipends. So that is item 65. Item 66 to 68 are various stipend positions, including team leaders, school communication liaisons, and intervention and referral services, IRS members. Items 69 to 71 are for our ESEA um, Title I uh, and Title III summer program. You see this phrase, GTAPS Summer Academy. This is actually the food service piece of that 69 up to 71, my apologies. So that is food service for ESY, Academy, and Summer Extension, as well as at the charter school. Item 72 is for nurses' summer work. Now I get to Summer Academy. Item 73 through 78 are for various categories of staff for our Summer Academy program. For many years, this was learned, uh, known as SLP, or Summer Learning Program. There have been some refinements to the program, and it is now the GTPS Academy. Item 79 is for Ready for K program, and this is either for students new to our kindergarten um, that have not been to a preschool or our preschool or other children identified with benefit from this. Items 80 through 110, and you may be breathing a sigh of relief that I am not reading all of these. These are all uh, items of summer work. Some are for curriculum writing, some are staff members that are planning professional workshops uh, to give to their colleagues and administrators, and some are for the actual participants to attend the workshops. And, uh, you know, we have always had many summer offerings. This summer, it definitely is expanded. Um, some of the categories are required for staff and some are optional, some are asynchronous, they can be done at any time, and some are uh, in person. Item 111 is uh, for home instruction. Item 112 is for supplemental instruction. Uh, item uh, 113 uh, through 116 are related to uh, students with disabilities, including non-public case management, and additional staff not previously approved, uh, or a change in approval for extended school year. So I believe uh, President Parvin and I have covered 58 through 116. Yes, ma'am. And I have a motion to provide items 58 through 116, please. So moved. Second. Is there any board comment? Yes, I do. I'm just really thrilled to see so much professional development, um, accelerated learning. I see that and I'm just excited about that. <laughs> I just think it's great. Um, and student council um, and, and all of these activities coming back. And I think about how so much of learning are these sort of side things that we don't really consider, but there's, there's so much to, to that impacts the school community and the community at large right now. Thank you. Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bacharabo? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Dr. Billowa? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Polgettis? Yes. Dr. Carmichael? Vice President Dace? I'm just going to stay on resolution number 64 and yes on everything else. 
President Carmen. Yes. Moving on to policy, Dr. Parmenter isn't here this evening, but she did provide me with an update. She said the policy committee met on June 7th to discuss the policy on children of non-resident employees attending school in the district, and that it was tabled until more information could be had. The next policy meeting is July 14th, 2022. Do you have anything else, Dr. Parmenter? Thank you. We did one that I, I thought I was going to have to do. That's why I appreciate that Dr. Parmenter sent you that as show. She sent it and moving on to notice of public meetings, please. Thank you. Uh, in July, there are three special meetings in the GTMS library at various times. And then uh, in July and August, there was one regular meeting each month, both at 6 p.m. here in the GTMS cafetoria. Special events? Yes. I'm um, pleased to announce that we already have the date for the Once a Time, Once Upon a Time players that will be presenting Willy Wonka Jr. And that is right here in the GTMS cafeteria. You can see the dates and times. Also, our Summer Pops concert. Uh, again, the dates and times. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's in the cafeteria or the gym, but I'll make sure everyone knows that. Thank you. Now, going around the board, is there any old or new business, Mrs. Colgatis? Dr. Billy. Dr. Bashar Lepp. And now I just want to say congratulations to everyone um, who made to the position, so welcome to everyone in the district. Thank you, Mrs. Chester. Mr. Gentile. Thank Mr. Davies. A couple things. First, I'd like to welcome all of your staff. God bless you, everybody behind you. I'd like to thank all the old staff for the great job they did with the children in this year. Uh, boys and girls of Dr. Lowy, the high school, did an excellent job. Thank you, staff, and parents, for everything. Also, I attended Mr. Pete Gardens, which uh, made Mrs. Palmer and Mrs. Avery pull in. The kids, the students, did a great job presenting things, and they answered the questions, which, you know, we asked them many questions about what is your project about, and they, they did a great job talking about it. And uh, they were really nice. And the only thing I would like to say, I'll probably get in trouble for you for sure. Uh, one thing that I would like to see added to the curriculum be a class for respect. So the children and the students learn to respect each other and staff and adults. That's really important. I don't know if it can be a, I'm not an educator, so I don't know if that's a uh, curriculum thing or not. Yes, well, Mr. Davis, actually, we do have a social skills curriculum called Second Step, and learning to um, Resolve conflict, how to engage and interact with others. It absolutely is part of that curriculum at the preschool level. Um, social stories and social skills are built into the creative curriculum. And that's also a big part of a lot of our programs for our students with disabilities. Okay. In addition to that, um, the different schools have different um, positive behavior incentive programs. So really, there is a lot done in the district to promote that concept of respect. Um, we know sometimes it comes out better than others, but it certainly is a priority uh, in the district, both from the curriculum and from the non-instructional aspects. Thank you. Now I can learn something about the curriculum. And anything else going forward to me with the curriculum, I very appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davies. I'd like to say welcome to the new staff as well. And do we have any public comment this evening? Okay, seeing none, we do have executive session this evening. So can I have a motion to go into executive session? Uh, and I'm going to read the motion. Motion for Galley Township Board of Education to recess to executive session on June 27, 2022, for the purpose of discussing attorney client, client communication, personnel, superintendent's evaluation. Further result of the Galley Township Board of Education's discussion of each subject matter in executive session shall be disclosed to the public. If and when confidentiality is no longer required, an action pursuant to said discussion takes place in a public meeting unless otherwise prohibited by law. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Alley Township Board of Education will be in executive session for approximately 60 minutes, and action may or may not be taken upon return. Can I have a motion to go into executive session, please? So, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Meeting adjourned.